Greg, information is something that's very important. Everybody talks about it. And generally in the past, it's been representational of physics or the way reality is. But some people today are now trying to say that information is the single most fundamental thing, that it sits below more fundamental than anything else, and that everything is information, and that other things like mathematics, laws of physics, are built up from pure information. Well, yeah, that means the idea is that matter is no longer at the center stage. You agree with that? Physical objects are no longer at the center stage. Tables and chairs and, and matter is no longer the fundamental thing. If this viewpoint is correct, the fundamental thing is information. And I would say zero and one bits, in fact. You know, uh, um, it's like Pythagoras. Pythagoras, I think, said everything is number, one, two, three, four, five. Right. And this new version says everything is zero and one bits. I think that's a very interesting viewpoint. You know, it may sound trivial said this way, but there is an awful lot around it. One aspect of it is, I mean, look at biology. DNA is the central thing in biology. I mean, look at all our technology. It's all digital now. It's not analog information. Uh, HDTV, all of that stuff. Everything is digital, but that... that Computers. That is, but that's just, it's that's digital. a technology. I want to talk about the fundamental nature of reality. Well, I agree, but we're sort People of inspired. People by metaphor. Metaphor yeah. today means nothing. Okay, look, I don't believe in real numbers. A real number is, has an infinite amount of precision. You know, it's a point on a line. Right. And to know exactly where it is, you'd have to, no computer could, you couldn't put that number in a computer because it would go on forever to say where a point is with infinite precision. So if you don't believe in real numbers, then I think you've got to go to the other extreme. All oh. that exists are zero and one. Everything is discrete, you see? Oh. Is the world continuous or is the world discrete? Okay, I think that's, that's part of that's, it. That, that, that's a good question. I think that's, that's part a, that of it. That is a fun, I agree. That is a fundamental yeah. question. It's an easy question. It's one or the other. Okay. There's no other possibility. Well, there Isn't might there? be, but, but <laughs> yeah. But, you know, let me give you another example of this. I think quantum mechanics is much weirder than people want to recognize. Quantum mechanics already sent matter into the garbage can and is already a theory in which information, in a way, is the fundamental physical reality and not matter. And let me say why. Just look at the Schrodinger equation, 1924. The Schrodinger equation, if you have a hydrogen atom, you have a proton in the middle, and you have an electron going around. Yeah, yeah. Very simple. Right. Very simple. This is matter, right? You have two particles, a, a proton and, a, and an electron. But what is the equation about? The equation is about probabilities. The electron is not the fundamental thing. The fundamental thing is a field. It's a probability wave, which says where the electron is. And the electron can be anywhere. It's just more likely to be close to the proton than much further away. And this is a wave which goes up and down and which interferes constructively and destructively. And this is what the Schrodinger equation is. So what is the Schrodinger equation about? It's not about matter anymore. The Schrodinger equation doesn't say where the electron is going to be. It just talks about probabilities and how they, um, the, the wave, the form of the waves and how they interfere. What is a probability? It's information about the electron. It's really, look at, look at another thing. In, um, it's already an idealist theory rather than a materialist theory, the Schrodinger equation. Let me give you another example. Quantum mechanics people say that when you make a measurement, you create the reality. Yes. Because it wasn't, it was just probabilities before. But when you force nature to actually give you a definite answer, then the probability, the wave function collapses is the lingo. But what does that mean? That means, in a, and, and if you look at experiments about interference, what's interfering is our knowledge about the physical system, about the electron. There, is, there are a number of experiments which, which show that it really, it's really, so if it's a knowledge, that's information, if that's interfering. And the physical reality with, it's really, quantum mechanics is already an idealist theory. It's already a theory about ideas. It's, uh, it, it, it's not about objects. It's not about matter. Already, inf it's informa probability is information about matter. That's the fundamental reality. It's information about matter, or it is the matter. It's the fundamental thing of the matter, well, or it's about the matter. The matter is an epiphenomenon. The fundamental reality is the, is the wave, is the probability wave that the Schrodinger equation deals with. And actual particles, that matter is just a secondary phenomenon. It's not the fundamental phenomenon. The fundamental phenomenon is this interfering wave of information or knowledge, or it's information. Okay. Now, yeah. a wave is generally looked upon as analog. As, as continuous. As, as continuous. Well, and, and yes. so are you saying that this is really very discrete, going down to the Planck length or something, that all at the end is zeros and ones to define this wave? 
Well, quantum mechanics is sort of ambiguous, I think. I'm not a physicist, but my impression is that it's sort of ambiguous because it's dealing with atoms, which are particles, but the mathematics that they use is continuous mathematics. Mm -hmm. You know, because you talk about vibrational modes, uh, what do you call them, standing waves. And so you use continuous mathematics, but you end up with something discrete coming out. But uh, so quantum mechanics, the real, but quantum mechanics is really trying to tell us, I think, that the universe is discrete. But it didn't quite go all the way. So the mathematics of that, uh, a lot of it, like the Schrodinger equation, is continuous mathematics. But, um, you know, I just don't like continuity. What can I say? (laughs) Because, 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 Feynman put it rather beautifully. He said, if you believe in continuity, in fields, in everything continuous, if you take a very little cube of space or space-time or whatever, no matter how small, you need an infinite amount of information to say what's going on in there. And he said he couldn't believe it. I mean, it just, I mean, you can never, you could never simulate the universe, you know, some of us think the universe is a computer, is a computation. I mean, no computer could ever deal with that infinite amount of information. You know, how can God do the calculation? You know, so, so Feynman says that he thinks, I I believe he says something like, he thinks it's more likely that when you get down, really down, it'd be more like a checkerboard. And this may be an idea that a friend of mine, Ed, Edward Fredkin, tried for years to, to convince him of, and then he was very pleased when it appeared in this book, even though Feynman had, had been fighting it all that time. That was at least a version that I vaguely recall Ed Fredkin saying. But you see, the, re- the inspiration is the computer. The idea is, what if the computer isn't just a metaphor? Now, all my work on algorithmic information theory is, is this notion of saying understanding is a computation. Physicists say, some physicists now say the universe is a computation. Do you say that too? I think it's a, yeah, I, I think that's great. And it fits in with my view that, that a theory is a computation. A theory is a computation. What it takes, it's a computer. You take as input your theory, and what do you produce as output? Well, the physical universe, or mathematical theorems. And, and, and when is a theory good? And this goes back to Leibniz in 1686. A theory is good when it's a compression, when what you put into the computer is simpler or smaller than what you right. get out. Then you right. understand. And you, that understanding can be mathematical or it can be physical. So for me... The notion of, a, of thinking of a theory as a computation, of an explanation as a computation, leads to a new kind of view of information and complexity, which gives you a whole new way of looking at epistemology. What is understanding? Why, where does truth come from? What is a theory? And when is a theory successful? And when is there no theory? So I, so I propose a whole information theoretic way of, of looking at epistemology, which I think really comes from ideas of Leibniz, uh, you know, with 300 years of development. But, but and, and I think it's just great that at the same time, biologists are saying, well, what counts in biology is ADN, which is just digital information. And, and then physicists are, are saying the Bekenstein-bound black holes, maybe the uh, space, uh, physical universe is discrete, and maybe a physical system only has a finite amount of bits inside. And maybe the right way to think about the universe is the universe is a computation. What is the universe computing? It's computing its future state from its current state. You know. So all of these viewpoints, it seems to me... Amazing that all of them sort of move pushing in the same direction. Now, they could all still be wrong, but I think it's very exciting when you start seeing the arrows pointing in the same direction. So I think it's worth giving it a try. That the universe, everything that exists... Think of everything as a computation. Understanding the physical universe, uh, DNA, biology, current technology also is all, is all digital. So maybe God also, you know, prefers to do things digitally rather than discrete rather than with analog or continuous. You know, if you want to make a copy of something, with analog, with an analog continuous universe, you could never make an exact copy of a universe. Let's say you have a universe and you want to make a change and see how it runs. Well, you can't make a copy, exact copy of a universe if it's continuous and analog. But a discrete universe, you can make exact copies, which is great for playing around with possible worlds, with alternate worlds. Maybe that's what God did? Well, Leibniz talks about all possible worlds, you know. So yeah, there, 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 there's a, there are a lot of physicists now who are starting to look about something called the landscape, which is the, the all possible worlds, not just our physical universe, sort of this, the space of all possible universes, the space of all possible physical laws. Um, I mean, you could view this as saying the physicists now are stuck, <laughs> but another way to look at it is uh, this is an amazing jump. 
from looking at just one individual universe to looking at, at many possible universes and trying to understand it all. In a way, we've already transcended ourselves and gone to a, a more godlike attitude to physics. Uh, a critic would say, this is metaphysics. This is not physics anymore. We're attempting to, we're attempting to think about the world using pure thought rather than using hints from experiment. But the other, which is a possible criticism, the other point of view is that this is just an immense outpouring of new theoretical ideas and even of metaphysics, of philosophical ideas, uh, such as the world hasn't seen, you know, maybe since the Greece of Pericles. So at the end of the day, what do you think about the possibility that the universe just is information and that everything is a computation? Well, this would say the universe is mind. You know, this is just a replay of a new version of old ideas. This would say that the universe is mind, not matter. Quantum physics already almost says that. Because information is what? Is something in the mind, maybe. Or maybe it's the mind of God. I mean, this, this is a replay in a way of an old question, which is what is primary? Matter? Is the universe built of matter? Or is the universe built out of thoughts or mind? And this is a, an issue that deep philosophers thought about. We may think now that it's obsolete, but we've reinvented it, damn it. That's exactly what this is. This is just a reinvention of the better. We <laughs> and progress. Maybe, and maybe more real. Yeah. And guess what? The physical universe just might be this way. That mind, that computation, that information is the real reality. Matter is just an epiphenomenon, or is just a, an artifact of what mind is. Sure. It's, I think that's a possible world. And it may be ours? And it may be ours. If we're lucky, we'll find out. If not, we can keep speculating. <laughs>